All right, I've been practicing uh, with my rope runner and using a similar configuration that I've used for other devices. But uh, I'll show you how my setup is and I'm liking the rope runner. I think it's gonna be a replacement for me when it comes to using the Unisender. But I have my rope runner set up. I'm using a Pantene right now because I'm practicing um, how quickly I can go up and disengage from the rope and come right back down. If there was a snake or a swarm of bees that were coming my way, that becomes important. Um, I have a foot loop that I install on the carabiner for the rope walking. And I found that the height of my foot loop works out best if the top of the uh, rope runner is at about the bottom of my chin. And then I adjust my tether to about, about that length. Now because when I'm rope walking, this is, I don't have a passive part of my system, so there's nothing to be tended, but because this has flop in it, I've taken measures to control the flop and I put keepers on both sides of the rope grab. My life support eye is uh, captured on the side of the carabiner. I have a uh, swivel pulley on my bridge and I really like the swivel pulley because it also controls any movement when you have flop and the orientation of the, uh, the carabiner. The uh, nice thing I like about the adjustable tether is it's easy to adjust with one hand, whether I'm rope walking or changing over into a limb walk configuration, I can adjust that easily with one hand. The same thing with my foot loop, I can easily adjust that with one hand. When I'm rope walking, I take the rope runner and I have the pulley facing me and my hand goes in this position. I've taken the pin and I've moved the pin onto the other side so it doesn't stab me into the palm of my hand. As I'm, as I'm progressing the rope runner up the rope, I'm making sure that this bird is always engaged. This bird is just like a friction hitch. It functions just like a friction hitch and you need to make sure that it always is set like a friction hitch. There's a spring here to assist in that, but I think it's still your responsibility, just like using a hitch, to make sure that your hitch is always engaged and engaging. So we'll do, we'll do a little walk up the rope and come That was up and down, and I can be a little quicker with it, actually. All I have to do to start my descent is kick off my Pantene, reach up. What I usually do is rotate, rotate the rope runner around so that when I rotate it, my hand goes on the bird in this configuration. And in that configuration, I have full control over my descent. Right now, I'm using a Tachyon double braid and it's a little little slipperier, uh, slipperier than the uh, poison ivy was so there are times when i have to push in on the bird a little bit to further engage for the descent so for the descent so we'll go back up and in this configuration we'll practice a limb walk. So I'll adjust the length of my tether, remove my foot loop. Take off the pantene. Again, it's really easy to rotate from this position with the swivel. It's very easy to rotate and get the bird 
in the uh, configuration for full control of the descent. No. All right, so if we want to do a little rope walk, I like it with the tether all the way up. And I found with another rope grab, it's easier to get it a little closer, but that's close enough. And again, the bird is in that configuration on my hand. I can have full control over the friction, do my rope walk. Now, coming back again, it's really important to make sure that that bird is engaged every time. And in this configuration, it takes both hands to tend and to walk back. Again, every time I make sure that that hitch, that bird is engaged. Another method to do that, rope walk, and facilitate one-handed control is to put on a hand ascender and a revolver, clip the tail onto my belt so I don't lose the tail. Now I can walk out maintaining control again with the, the friction. But when I do get ready to come back, I can do the rope walk with one hand. And another thing is when you're in this configuration, the uh, tendency is for that to squeeze together and it may disengage that bird. But like always, make sure that your hitch is engaging. And with this, oops, with this I can walk back with one hand using, using my other hand to hold the branch. Again, every time make sure the bird is engaged. Now I can remove this. All right, so we'll go down a pitch. Do a down check. Make sure I have a bitter end knot. All right, again, I rotate the rope runner. So my hand has control over the bird. All right, now, let's say I was gonna come back up a, uh, okay, so now that I'm at the lower pitch and I'd like to walk back up the rope, and have my hands free. The pulley is facing away from me. My tether is shortened. And I'm going to take my foot loop, attach it to the carabiner. And in this case, I want it very short. That will leave the rope runner at about the height of my saddle. I take the tending attachment with my neck lanyard and put it on the pin, just on the outside pin of the rope runner. And I'll attach my foot pin team. And now every time I take a step, that rope runner, the bird on the rope runner, will engage and it will follow me up the rope. 
and I have my hands free to move about the tree. Once I get to my limb, again, make sure that the bird is engaged. I adjust the length of my foot loop. Remove the tending pulley. And I think it's good to remove the uh, clip that goes on there so it's not interfering with that slick pin and get the height of my walker set on the pantene and I am ready to turn turn the rope runner again so that my hand goes on that, that configuration get my rope back Re-engage the pantene. And I'm ready to walk. Now again, I can make minor adjustments very easily with the foot loop and set the length of my tether to optimize walking up the rope. Once I'm reach my tying point, I can shorten that tether, rotate the rope runner so that the bird is in my hand. And again, I can control the descent quite easily. If I need more friction, I can push. All right, I'll do one more. One more ascent. How did that, huh? Ta -da. All right, I've been adjusting. Uh, I tried adjusting this uh, bollard, and I'm going to try several different climbing lines. This is uh, tachyon. I was using poison poison ivy double braid. This is a tachyon double braid, and uh, I like that all the way open. This has been a little smoother than the uh, poison ivy and um, it's quite smooth on the descent and on the landing uh, being open like that i have found a few times that i have to push up on the bird to uh, increase uh, my deceleration but generally all i have to do is pull down and control the descent that way With, with the way this is set, I can have my thumb right here ready to push up on the bird to uh, get more, more friction for the descent. I like that position for control. This is New England Dragonfly. It's a kern mantle. It's the same as the red fly that they sell. It's fairly stretchy. And we'll take a I like that. Just for fun, this is 11 millimeter cirrus that came with it's part of my CE lanyard actually 10 and a half millimeters if you measure it and I have not even adjusted the bollard it's still wide open and we'll do a short little climb and see what that feels like
it's a little a little grabbier but it still works pretty well and i get a decent descent out of that just for fun we'll try some nine millimeter htp kern mantle i would imagine without tightening up that bollard it's going to slip it does indeed slip but i can push up I can push up on that and still pretty much get it to engage before I turn it into a pretzel. Okay, I've tightened up that bollard with the 9mm line. We'll see what happens with this. Oops, messed up my screen. Shut my door. Look at that. That's 9mm. This 9mm line is slipping just a little bit, but that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Still has, still has a little bit of slip, and it just looks like it's going to keep slipping. works pretty well this is 7 16th sterling HTP kern mantle it's one of my favorite my favorite lines for tall trees it's very low stretch actually seems pretty smooth Go all the way up and see how that is. I would probably probably tighten that bollard up a little bit for this, but I like it. It's actually pretty smooth for being a kern mantle. 